Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, today what I've got is a first impressions on a knife I got from my in-laws for Christmas. I had seen these and had looked at them and just didn't know about them. And they ended up getting me one for Christmas. And the verdict's still out on it. But the knife we're going to talk about is the Columbia River Knife and Tool BIWA. It's spelled B I W A, I believe. Yeah. But it's pronounced BIWA. So, doing a little studying on this, this knife was designed as a bird and trout knife by Alan Foltz. And I wondered about it being a good pick for an everyday carry fixed blade. I like the fact that you can just drop it in your pocket and it disappears. So far, what little bit I've missed with it, I've been very, very happy with it. I've used it opening boxes, opening mail, everything you would use a small fixed blade for day to day. I've used it in the kitchen, and I'll tell you, that's where it impressed me the most. But we're going to discuss this a little bit and talk about a few things with it. There are three different versions of this out there, if I'm correct. There is this version here with the black and green, black and tan, whatever color you want to call it, G10 handles. There is a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive which has green handles and a leather belt sheath. And then there is a black version, which has black G10 handles. And I think it's got a different steel in it. And I'm not sure, but I think the Smoky Mountain Knife Works version has a different steel in it as well. But the thing that I liked about this was the little injection molded plastic sheath. Now, I have done one thing to this sheath. I have heated it up and squeezed these together to increase the amount of retention on it. It just didn't fit tight enough for me. And in a neck carry option, which we'll go over in a minute, it bothered me because I was afraid of moving around that it would just fall out because it wasn't real, real tight in there. But it comes in the Kydex, well, I'm sorry, thermal plastic sheath. It comes with a little belt loop that attaches. The only thing that I see with that is it only attaches in a scalp carry configuration. Uh, it will mount in the bottom two holes up or down but then it rides so high. And on top of that, that is only about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half belt. So it would have to be a very small belt. It did come with a piece of paracord and a nice slide adjuster. Uh, can't say I've seen very many this way. It actually has two holes, one for each strand, which is really nice. And like that. Don't know that I'll carry it as a neck knife. Not a real big fan of neck knives, but hey, they serve their purpose. The biggest thing I'll probably do with it is just chuck it just like this in my pocket. So let's talk about specs. I couldn't find anything on the hardness, so I can't help much there. The overall length is 6.63 inches, so it's very small. 
the blade length is 3.02 inches. The blade thickness is 0.11. The weight of the knife by itself is 1.6 ounces. The weight of the knife and the sheath is 2.7 ounces. So this thing is ungodly light, which is, to me, a great thing for an EDC knife. You want something that's lightweight enough that it just disappears and you don't know you've got it until you need it. I do like the way it's got this swedge on the back. But that swedge is not sharpened, so it doesn't hurt anything like that. Got good jimping there. Got a little bit of jimping right there. Not real sure what the purpose of that is, because you have to be gripping it hard for that jimping to really bite. It came with a piece of paracord. Now, that piece of paracord was actually about that long. I tied it off there and cut it off there for a reason. The reason I cut it off there is because it fits well around your pinky. And then if you twist it one time and roll your hand up on it, it locks that thing into place. There's no guard whatsoever. So doing that, it locks that knife in and it does not move. I wear medium sized gloves and you can see the size of the handle. If I'm holding it like that, you just barely can see the end of the handle through it. Now, here's where this thing really comes into its own. We all know how well the open L's are in the kitchen. Because of the flat grind and the thinness of that blade stock, these things make incredible food prep knives. If you look at that, let me get it there where you can see it. Very, very tiny bit thicker than the open L. Now, I've cut up onions, I've cut up peppers, stuff like that. And this thing is incredible for stuff like that. I've cut up some thin cut steaks with it and wow. The thing that really, really shines with this one in the kitchen is the blade thickness from top to bottom. There's very little drag when using it for food prep. As far as sharpness, out of the box, it would shave hair. I did strop it a little bit, but I, it hasn't touched the stone yet. Probably not the best paper. Let's do this. Hang on a minute. Now, regular notebook paper. You can look at it real, real close and still see the grind marks in the edge. I don't know if I can get it up here where you can see that or not. Uh, that one's not gonna do it. I may have to, here in a minute, flip this camera around and let you see it from the other side. But you can see the grind marks in it. As an EDC fixed blade, 
so far, so far, I can highly recommend this thing for everyday cutting tasks. It is small enough that it disappears in the pocket. And to give you an idea, let's see, here we go. We're all pretty familiar with the Azula too. There you go for a size comparison. So it is a whole lot smaller than the Azula 2. If you're looking for a very lightweight, slim design for a fixed blade EDC that you can just drop in your pocket and forget about, you can't go wrong with this thing. I've used it making curls. Let me get you turned around here a little. wants to bite so deep. It doesn't have any problem with that kind of stuff. Now granted, this is not designed as a bushcraft knife, but if you had this on you and in a pinch, you could make curls to get a fire started. You could carve notches for trap triggers, stuff like that with it. And it would perform very well. So, not sure that this one, due to its size, will be one that I get out on the stump just because it's simply not designed for that purpose. I may try to do a follow-up video to where I get some video of it in the kitchen because that's where this knife really comes into its own being handy out in the field. Uh, but for your day-to-day -day tasks, definitely a big thumbs up. Tickled to death with it so far. Don't see that changing. Uh, I think these are coming in at under 50 bucks. So, I mean, good gracious for the knife. Uh, the one thing, if there is a drawback to it, is the steel that's in this one. Uh, it's 8CR13 MOV. It's not a bad steel, but it's not... An incredible steel. Let's put it that way. Uh, you see it in a lot of the Columbia River knife and tool steels, or tool knives, sorry. And it works for what it's designed to. The edge holding ability is not bad for a stainless. Me, myself, I'm a carbon steel guy, so... It's no 1095, but hey, for what you're going to be doing with this knife, it, it'll work great for that. So there you are. Sorry I got a little long-winded with it. Like, share, subscribe. Here in a couple of weeks, I'll get you a follow-up with that one. The Camp Creek Fire Edition, I'm going to have a follow-up coming with it. I've got some more use on it, and got a little better idea of the 
design, if that makes sense. And we'll uh, get that out probably here in the next three or four days. And then probably take it out on a stump and beat on it a little bit just to show you what it can and can't do. So there we go. Like, share, subscribe. I'll get another one up for you soon.